Good afternoon, preppers. Welcome to Goshen Prepping. I want to put out this video. It's going to be, however, controversial. I need you to understand this. And there will be some people out there, even watching this, will not agree with it. And that's fine. We can get along without attacking each other. But talking about attacking, I see in our present modern day culture a, an attack on babies. More than anything, it's actually an, an attack on fertility. It's an attack on having babies, which of course means it's an attack on humanity itself because of course we all used to be babies. Um, it's certainly going to go against what the government puts out because the government really tries to put out that they're the help out babies, but I don't think that's to be the, I don't think that's the case at all. So you may be shocked in where this video will go. So stay through it and watch the whole thing and hear me out. And I'd definitely like to have your opinion in the end as well. Again, as long as we stay civil, but simply put the way I see things, there's an attack on babies, the world. And especially the United States is actually having kids, especially multiple kids, is becoming less and less socially acceptable, especially having more than two, you know, because once you get into three or four, or for my family, here's my family, we have eight kids and we love it. We're a close knit loving family. And especially as a dad, I love vesting interest so much into my children. We have a great time together. Our oldest is 22 and our youngest is two. It's just it's, it is a dream come true in my opinion. We love to play together, work together. We go backpacking and camping together, study martial arts together, or practically our whole family does. We help each other out. It really is kind of like an old school loving family if you kind of look at the, kind of like the norm of how that things used to be. But you know, I understand having a big family is not for everyone and I get that. Uh, some people don't like the chaos, the loud noises, so much to handle, the pressure, and there's a lot of that when you have so many kids. And there are many times I have to tell the kids, including like right now, guys, you need to keep it down because I'm trying to film, I'm working. What they'll often do is just go up to a room and play together, and sometimes you can actually hear them stomping around or yelling, and that's great because you know what? They're called kids, and they like doing those kind of things. But that's life, isn't it? Because even as adults, we have times where we can play, and sometimes we need to compartmentalize and work, and teaching them at, that as kids there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, that's important because it makes them more constructive adults. Okay, so off to the store we go. And what we see is a sharp dichotomy in people's reactions when we have the whole family with us. There are some people who love it and they're like, oh my gosh, you have eight kids. That's so awesome. I love it, love it. And they often will have stories of, I had eight kids or six kids or 12 kids, whatever, in my family too. And it was the best of times and we loved everything. Those kind of people always greet us with smiles and love. It's amazing. I don't think I've ever met somebody from a big family who came back and said it was the worst experience ever. I don't think I've ever seen that. Then there's those who think we're doing the world a disservice. And uh, they sometimes let us know that, you know what, you're wrong for having a large family. And of course they say things like, don't you know where babies come from? And haven't you ever heard of condoms and stuff? And like I said, I, we hear this stuff all the time, by the way, it's pretty amazing. Um, those are the same people, by the way, who are also going to believe in the lie of what we call overpopulation. It is a flat out lie. And we talk about some different things about that. Like for example, if you gave every single person on the planet a 2000 square foot home and put those homes in Alaska, they'd all fit just in Alaska. And of course, that's not always talking about usable land. Obviously, Alaska has a lot of usable land, but there's places like the Arctic or Antarctica that doesn't and stuff. And I get that. But if you actually gave every single person on the planet two acres of usable land for forestry or farming, whatever the case may be, you'd still have some land left over. This whole thing about overpopulation is a lie. And for some reason, not only people attach onto it, but they attack us to it, about it as well. And of course, as we get into this whole thing about climate, they think that we're basically as humans just overpopulating the planet. And they have a right and obligation to reduce the population of the planet and ridicule us for having kids. All right, this can be done through many methods, of course, and we see this. I'm not going to get into that because YouTube will flag me and you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to talk about the methods of infertility because this is huge. Because if you actually look at how things are done and how reducing the population is accomplished, infertility rates have to be the number one thing because you can definitely clearly see there's infertility. And it's really funny because the government and mainstream media and all that all say, we don't know what's causing this infertility. Yeah, you do. I mean, you personally, MSM, whatever, may not know, but the government knows exactly what they're doing. All right, so let's go ahead and first off take a look at this graph right here. This is a look at the world population versus fertility rates. In short, the world population is growing, but you notice it's starting to curve over 
And according to this graph, it's gonna crown over about what, 10 billion-ish around there somewhere. But look at the fertility rates and we can see why it is crowning over. They are dropping like crazy. Just FYI, people like Elon Musk says we're in big trouble because our fertility rates are dropping so fast. I agree. But it's not just the US, it's all over the world and experts claim they have no idea why. Personally, I think they're full of crap and you may do too. And I think they're doping our foods and other products on purpose to reduce our fertility so that way they can reduce the population of the planet over a long period of time. So I'm gonna go through some of the basic foods and products that are known to cause infertility. I want you to see this. Carrageenan, a natural thickener in emulsifier in foods. Find it in soy milks, meats, shakes, milk, yogurts, a lot of things like that. Even processed things like frozen burritos and pizza, ice cream, infant formula, that scares me. But what scares me more is look at all the things it causes. Painful menstruation, endometriosis, polycystic ovarian syndrome, ovarian cyst, uterine fibroids, adenomyosis, Asherman's, PID, immunological infertility with recurrent miscarriages, anti-sperm antibodies where a male sperm is attacked by the own immune system, and the list goes on. This is a very, very common product, ingredient found in our products. It's very common. That should frighten you alone, but there's more. Perchlorite, found in all kinds of stuff, matches, flares, airbags, chlorine cleaners, chemicals for the pool, chewing tobacco. In women, it leads to alteration of estrogen metabolism, menstrual problems, and disruption in ovulation. In males, disruption of sperm and production, fluctuations to testosterone, and even erectile dysfunction. And we even find this in people's drinking water. You can get your drinking water tested to see if it's in there. Bisphenol A, or simply just BPA, it is used for the production of polycarbonate plastics and epoxy resins for things such as like food storage containers, plastics, like plastic plates and stuff. And that's bad news. And that's why you should be looking for only plastics that are what are called BPA free. It is literally a polycarbonate form of estrogen all joined together. Who thought about putting estrogen to make plastic uh, food containers for us? I wonder. It is a strong endocrine disruptor. In men, efficiency of sperm cells are reduced. And simply put, again, just make sure things are BPA free. And you'll find some plastic plates that says they're safe for the microwave. Not in our family. I constantly tell my family, don't put any plastics in the microwave. I prefer not to have plastics for a lot of the stuff anyway. But if you have some, the last place you'll ever want to do is warm your food up in the microwave with it. PFAs, or simply perfluoroalkyl and polyfluoroalkyl substances, they make all kinds of products. And the biggest one you find them is nonstick cookware, but also stain resistant clothes and carpets and the foam and fire extinguishers. This one is a big one. And again, stay to the end of the video. I wanna show you something about this, this one chemical specifically. Also found in fast food containers, microwave popcorn bags, stain resistant water repellent clothing, and lots of other products for personal and commercial use contain this chemical and it should be avoided at all costs. They can negatively affect a woman's ability to get pregnant as well as birth weight of newborn child will be hindered fetal growth and cognitive development problems. It can stay in your system for years, if not a lifetime. Phthalates, they act like hormones interfering with male genital development. Also, risk of obesity and cardiovascular disease. It's found in plastic packaging, garden hoses, inflatable toys. Also, nail polish, hairsprays, lotions, and fragrances. It's in a lot of stuff. You can actually see labels now that say it's free of it. That's good. Pesticides and herbicides. Of course, this has nothing to do with us specifically, but it's found in farm stuff, you know, farming herbicides and pesticides, which they use regularly in non-organic farming. Has all kinds of adverse effects in the reproductive system. Creating a diet with less pesticides has been shown to increase the likelihood of getting pregnant. And people often take non-organic fruit or something like that and spray it with a spray. No, the actual cell structure has already, already absorbed the herbicides and pesticides. And there's a spray that's not going to take that off, at least not all of it anyway. Parabens cosmetic product preservatives, also things like beer, processed foods, sodas, frozen dairy products. It's really funny how all these things you shouldn't be eating anyway, well, except for maybe beer. They are endocrine disruptors, affecting hormone metabolism and glucose levels. Now here's a big one that people don't know about and you should really listen. BHA and BHT. They are food additives used for preserving fat. They are found in all kinds of stuff like bacon, artificial colors and flavors, baked goods, canned food, soups, mashed potatoes, oils, margarine, gum, reduced fat spreads, which are bad anyway, baby oil, baby lotion, lipstick, eyeliner, shaving cream, food wraps, and the big one, pepperoni. Good luck finding a pepperoni that doesn't have BHA or BHT in it. We look for some because we don't actually eat pork in this family, but we'll eat like turkey pepperoni, 
or even beef pepperoni, they have it also. It leads to birth defects, infertility, and cancer, fatigue, hyperactivity, asthma, dermatitis, blistering, extreme weakness, eye irritation, weakened immune system, and allergic reactions in aspirin-sensitive people. And again, we have not found a pepperoni, and we've looked, that does not have this in it. And ironically, what is America's favorite pizza? Pepperoni pizza. Monosodium glutamate, or simply just MSG. It is found in all kinds of stuff too, including soy sauce, sauces, gravies, low-fat, no-fat milk, candy gum, processed food, flavored noodles, potato chips, corn chips, tortillas, crackers, gelatin, packet soup, quick soup, malt extract, also applied to non-organic food and vegetables as a wax or pesticide. In Asian takeout, they'll often have MSG, and it's still hidden, this is so evil, in baby food, cosmetic shampoos, soaps, and conditioners. I think people are catching on to this one, but you'll still find it all kinds of stuff because it is responsible for brain, nervous system, and reproductive system disorders. And last but not least, this is so awful, aspartame. You may know it as NutraSweet, Spoonful, or Equal. It is blamed for 75% of adverse reactions to food additives reported to the FDA. It is found in diet sodas and drinks, low-calorie foods, sugar-free gum, sugar-free candy, anything sugar-free, confectionaries, brewed soft drinks. Almost every sugar-free product has this, almost. There's over 5,000 products today with this chemical. It causes all kinds of problems. When it comes to infertility, it also causes neurological disorders, poor brain development in unborn children, menstrual imbalances, and impotence. But again, the list goes on and on. Here's more. Fibromyalgia, spasm, shooting pains, numbness in your legs, cramps, vertigo, dizziness, headaches, tinnitus, joint pain, depression, anxiety attacks, slurred speech, blurred vision, memory loss. Of course, when it comes to products, there certainly may be more. Long story short, were these additives introduced by accident? I mean, I don't know how they would actually make some of these by accident. Or was it intentional, knowing good and well it would decrease the world population? Understand, there's an attack going on against babies, against fertility, against mankind right now as they're trying to depopulate the earth and limit population. And although you may not have any babies yourself, you have to understand this is an attack, not just on babies, but against humanity. If you ever get a chance, watch the movie Dark Waters. It is all about some of these chemicals and the consequences of using them. It's a eye-opening movie, and you'll probably end up throwing out a bunch of your stuff after this movie. If not, then honestly, you're crazy because these chemicals are killing mankind.